Thank you. Welcome back to the final segment of the show today. We're talking to Dr. Lewis Baldwin from Vanderbilt University, and he's talking about the assassination of Dr. Martin Luther King. Uh, but more important, Dr. Uh, uh, Baldwin, let's see if we can th reflect upon some of the things that, uh, has, that have happened over the last few we, days, yes. dealing with some of the things that Dr. King was uh, in, involved in. Let's talk about it from that perspective. What we've seen over the last few days, as you well know, with the Supreme Court decisions, um, we've seen an attack pretty much on affirmative action. Uh, well, not so much an attack on affirmative action, but uh, an attack on voting rights. Uh, the decision on affirmative action, I think, uh, did not destroy the affirmative action uh, policies. Uh, which Dr. King was very much in favor of. Uh, many conservatives, I mentioned before the last segment, at the end of the last segment, that uh, Dr. King always felt uh, that affirmative action should be in place, mm -hmm. not simply for black people, but for all poor people. Mm -hmm. and, and he felt that affirmative action should be need-based mm -hmm. and not so much race-based. Mm -hmm. and, 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 and that's important. That has been pretty much kept in place. Uh, despite the fact that you have many attacks on affirmative action from the religious right and from the political right. But when it comes to voting rights, of course, we've seen over the last few days an effort to erode this whole idea of federal oversight. Uh, when you look at states like Alabama, my home state, Mississippi, Arkansas, those southern states uh, which, of course, as you well know in the past, have had many problems with voting. Uh, we wonder what will happen now, because what happened with the Supreme Court decision is that you had pretty much the elimination of federal oversight of voting processes in these states. So what will happen? Will uh, the votes be counted? Uh, will, will blacks uh, be intimidated at the polls? Uh, we have these kinds of questions now, and, and it all, I think, uh, amounts to uh, a kind of uh, backing away from Dr. King's legacy because, as you well know, Dr. King was all about voting rights, not only voting rights, but the right of people to hold public office. And we know that in 1965, the march from Selma to Montgomery was all about achieving not only voting rights, but the right of political participation. And we've seen over the last few years efforts to intimidate voters, uh, voter suppression. We saw that in the last presidential election. And we wonder what will happen now, now that uh, uh, federal oversight of the voting processes in, these in this country mm -hmm. have been sort of what eroded with uh, the recent Supreme Court decision. Mm -hmm. and, so, and so in a real sense, I think the challenge is, is, is really to almost rewrite, uh, in a real sense, the uh, whole history of voting in this country because uh, uh, you just can't sit back and not do anything. Exactly. And, and, and I think the pattern has already been laid out as to how you uh, accomplish uh, voting rights in this country. Do you think that it, it, it now requires us to do the same thing and get it back into the streets, the it, same kind of activity? I hope not, but it may require a kind of reoccurrence of what was happening in the 1960s. And of course, leaders like Al Sharpton have already said mm -hmm. that perhaps we will have to take to the streets again mm -hmm. uh, to make sure that uh, voting rights are secured. Uh, but I hope it doesn't, but it may very well require mm -hmm. some of the same kind of activism that occurred mm -hmm. in the 1960s. Mm -hmm. Very good. And, and, and so, that, that, so the uh, Voting Rights Act of, eight, of 1965 is part of Dr. King's legacy. It's part and, of his and, legacy, and so, yeah. And, and, and th that is only the political side. Of what, what are some of the other things that will draw us out and, and perhaps convince folks that uh, there is a real need for mm. some kind of action during this time, whether it's just writing letters or whether it's marching? Yes, I think, I think writing letters to congressmen is very, very important, and Al Sharpton has uh, recommended that. I think we also have to uh, we have to look at the possibility of nonviolent the possibilities of nonviolent direct action mm -hmm. in the form of marches and demonstrations. I think that's still relevant to our times. Uh, but the important thing is to make sure that people's right to vote uh, is secured, and and all Americans' right to vote uh, is secured. And we have to do whatever necessary 
to make sure that that happens. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, and, and so in a real sense, uh, Dr. King's assassination uh, uh, left a legacy mm -hmm. of struggle in a real sense. And, 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 and a and legacy of activism. And activism. Yes, and, and, yes. And, and so uh, in order for us to live up to uh, what Dr. King was all about, then mm -hmm. we have to at least do something. We yes. just can't, cannot decide. And what about just actual uh, uh, participation in the suffrage, which is to say that there are so many folks who don't vote, who don't vote, exactly, and who are not registered to vote, and who uh, and, and 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 some and, and I know in some of our own households, yes, yeah. uh, there are individuals in, within our own households That's who right. don't understand the importance of vote. What do we do in reference to that, in terms of our own personal kind of commitment? to uh, increase in the uh, number of uh, individuals, black or white, who are registered to vote. Well, I think Dr. King said something back in 1965, and I think it's still relevant, is that education is very important. Mm -hmm. That we got to use the tools of education to get people to see the importance of voting. That in any uh, process of participatory democracy, people have to vote. Uh, you can't uh, sit at home and not vote and then complain about the way government is run, you see? And, and I think education is the important thing. I think we also have to knock on doors, talk to people, meet people in churches. And, of course, the black church has always been used uh, as that kind of institution that informs people about what's going on in society and the need to to engage in not only political advocacy, but political participation. So we need to use the institutions of our community, the church, the family, the schools, to educate people, to get them to see the importance of participating in, in, in democracy, that if they want representative democracy, if they want participatory democracy, mm -hmm. then they have to become a part of it. And to sort of make a personal kind of commitment, uh, recognizing that no matter what state you might live in, no matter what kind of conditions that they might throw up in terms of trying to disfran disenfranchise you, exactly. that make sure that you can live up to whatever it is. Yes. If, if it means going out in the weather and standing out in the weather and waiting exactly. at the polls a long time in terms of casting a ballot, then even if it's not easy to do so, exactly. we ought to make up our minds that we are going to do it and that uh, we have no alternative uh, yes. save to do it. I, I mean, yes. I, that, that, that has been my attitude in reference to it. That whatever exactly. the state of Tennessee might throw up in terms of trying to keep me from voting, yeah. I am going to make, if yeah. anybody make it in terms of participating in the suffrage, yeah. I am going to participate. Yes. And I think that if we get that attitude and yes. if we get a lot of people with that kind of attitude, no matter what they do, yeah. uh, then, you know, then we will be able to vote because yes. there's nothing more important. Than voting because if you have no vote, you have no voice. No voice. And, and that's that's not good for democracy. That's not good at and all. We fought and marched and many died mm -hmm. for the creation of true participatory democracy. And if you don't vote, then you're not a part of, of, of that democracy. And, and we had it going well up until quite recently. Exactly. Up until the uh, recent uh, uh, Supreme Court uh, exactly. decision. Because now people are going back to uh, yeah. the drawing boards and trying to... Yeah. Um, reorganize the yeah. uh, counties and et cetera and et cetera. Yeah. And that should embolden us and should inspire us and motivate us mm -hmm. to become a part of the political processes. I think given what is happening now and what has happened over the last uh, year or so with voter suppression and voter intimidation, mm -hmm. that should inspire us mm -hmm. to become a part of the process, to really register to vote, to vote. Uh, that should inspire us. Yeah, and, and, and so hopefully uh, what you've said here today in reference to the assassination of Dr. King and the legacy of Dr. King, and uh, I think that uh, if people can sort of buy into the things that we're talking about now, we'll be all right in reference to and, yeah. and, and Africans still have to recognize that they're not fighting this war, uh, this battle by themselves. By themselves we didn't fight no. the civil rights war exactly. by themselves. But there are a large number of sympathetic folks who are exactly. interested in, in the participation of everybody in the yeah. suffering. And let yeah. me uh, thank you, Dr. Baldwin, for bringing yes. by that excellent information. Mm -hmm. And let me encourage our audience to tune in again next week for another informative edition of Comments. Thank you and good morning.
Thank you and welcome to the show this morning. The topic this morning is peacemakers, and we're fortunate to have with us the CEO of the organization Peacemakers, as well as Miss Elizabeth Dial, to uh, talk about some of the activities in reference uh, to this organization and some of the things that they are doing and hope to do in reference to helping to create a better society. And of course, uh, Ms. Greenlee, let me uh, first introduce you because you've been with us on a number of occasions. Mm -hmm. And uh, what we would like for you to do is to uh, introduce uh, Ms. Dow and give us uh, the reason that she's here. And after she introduces herself, to come back to you and to start talking about uh, the other members that will join us later on, as well as some of the things that you're involved in. Oh yes, I'm honored and very pleased uh, to uh, introduce Ms. Elizabeth Dowles. Uh, she came through uh, Nashville Peacemakers from Juvenile Court and uh, she will be sharing that. And at the end of the next segment, I will also have a marketing person here, Pasita Job. I will also have a student who have came through Nashville Peacemakers, Quantas Cleves, and he will be talking about what he do now. In the okay, community. very good. Let's start off, uh, 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 Ms. Uh, Greenlee, by having you to identify this organization, Peacemakers, for our audience, because I think we've talked about it on a number of occasions, mm -hmm. and then Ms. Dial will uh, join you in terms of how she became involved with this organization. Yes, Nashville Peacemaker is an um, uh, organization that's been going on for almost 10 years, and what we do, we come out to the community and try to educate and bring the awareness of youth violence, uh, troubled teens. Uh, due to the murder of my own son, people know about my story and my son. I continue to grow into what I believe in. And in order to keep doing things that I do, I always have to bring people, new people in to help get me to another level. And this is what we're getting ready to do with Nashville Peacemaker. We're bringing a model to the nation so we can have other states to follow what we're getting ready to bring to the community. And this is why Liz Dow has tagged on with the organization. Very good. Ms. Dow, why don't you give us some information about your background, sure. your education, and some of the, your experiences? Well, uh, Dr. Haney, um, the reason I'm here is because of you, because I was watching your show one morning, couldn't sleep. I was working with juvenile court. I have a degree in criminal justice, and I was a, a supervised probation officer for Davidson County. And it was on a Saturday morning, and I, was fl I couldn't sleep. It was 6 o'clock or 6.30, uh, I don't remember exactly, flipping through the station and saw this young, this little teeny weeny girl um, and the powerful message that she was bringing. And of course, it captivated me because I'm working with high-risk kids and high-risk families. So, um, of course, I didn't know it was a tape program, but I... Uh, hurried around, got a piece of paper and a pencil, and I jotted her number down, and I immediately called Clemmy uh, within 15, 20 minutes after the show, af after it was over with. And um, when I first, I said, uh, Clemmy, this is Liz Dial with Juvenile Court. She said, Juvenile Court? She says, I've been trying to get in Juvenile Court for a couple of years. Well, we had, I, I got, we hooked up we talked for about four or five hours in a restaurant, hooked her up with the gang specialist, Talate Russ at Davidson County Juvenile Court, and then she started uh, helping him. He always presented every month a program that the probation officers used and made it a requirement for a condition of probation. In the meantime, um, we, uh, I got in touch with some people at um, the detention center in the building and ask if we could take uh, take um, Alate, the gang specialist, Clemmy, and we had some other people that had some stories that had been in trouble, older and younger, that had a success story like Clemmy did. And uh, they just, the kids are just absolutely captivated with her. I mean, it's like a tennis match. The, 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 she walks this way, they follow her. Or the, it's, it's just mm -hmm. incredible because they identify with Clemmy. Yeah. She had, that's why I was so captivated. I wanted to share her with every kid that I had <laughs> on my caseload and all the kids at juvenile court. Yeah. She was a runaway. She was sexually abused at five. You know, she w had a teen pregnancy. She got in trouble with juvenile mm -hmm. court. Yeah. Oh. Um, she got into drugs. 
Um, she got into uh, drug trafficking, uh, selling and using drugs. And then, of course, her son was murdered, as she mentioned. Her son was murdered. And uh, then she went into treatment, and that was just, it, it yeah, shows so thank you. that yeah. she's such a success story. Very good. Um, and of course, uh, we're going to have to take our first commercial break. Sure. And we'll be back with our audience following this very, very uh, short commercial break. Thank you and welcome back to the show this morning. The topic this morning is peacemakers and we've been joined by two individuals also from the uh, peacemakers organization, uh, Ms. Uh, P. Job and Mr. Q. Gleaves, uh, both members of the peacemaker organization uh, who follows 
uh, Ms. Uh, Greenlee, as well as Ms. Elizabeth Dial, two earlier uh, guests uh, on this particular show. And of course, uh, Ms. Uh, Joe, let me uh, not only welcome you to the show, but to have you uh, to give us some information about your background, your education, and some of the experiences that eventually uh, connected you with the uh, Peacemaker organization. And Mr. Glees will give us essentially the same kind of information during this segment, and then we'll be able to have everybody back together and to talk about the Peacemaker organization. What about you, you and your relationship with this organization? Okay, Dr. Haney, uh, my name is Poncita Joe. Uh, I kind of came into contact with Ms. Greenlee uh, about four or five months ago with a mutual friend who said that she needed some help. Uh, I have a company called P. Marie 3 that actually does marketing and promotions. Uh, after doing a little bit of research online and finding out a little bit about her, I felt that she definitely had some good points and some good uh, workshops that really needed to be out there within the community to help our young teens and young adults uh, get out of that rut that they're in sometimes. Mm -hmm. And so in a real sense, uh, you are actively involved in helping her to, uh, you're do doing the marketing part of Yes, uh, this, I do uh, all of the marketing uh, by getting sponsorship, um, finding community um, centers that may be available to be uh, involved with the types of uh, workshops that she has to offer with the kids that they have in, in, around. Mm -hmm. Very good. Now, Mr. Gleese, how did you become involved with, with this organization? First, first off, I want to uh, say that it's an honor and privilege to be here. You know, uh, thank you. You know, thank Miss Clement for inviting me here. But yes, uh, National Peace Magazine, Miss Clement has impacted my life in such a great way. You know, that many people might not even realize the seed, but the seeds that were sown, you know, when, when she was starting off and when they got the building and everything by, by her trusting me with the building, with keys, mm -hmm. having mm -hmm. the truck and everything, it, it showed me love and, and, and see how I look now, you know, it, it might be easy, you know, to see that she would trust me, but I'm an ex-gang member, you know, and I come from the streets. I, I gang banged five years. You know, I had mm -hmm. dreads, had the grill, you know, and then, and that, that was me, you know, but the seeds that were sown from Miss Clement, it really impacted me, you know, mm -hmm. and now I'm a program director for Why Love Youth Inc. And now I'm also a minister yeah. in training, you know, so it, it's just a great honor to be here to speak about this. And so in a real sense, uh, you, you represent a real turn around in reference to the, mm -hmm. a former gang member and somehow you, quote, saw the light and et cetera. And, and so Ms. Greenlee had uh, a real impact upon your yes, life. Sir. Is that yes. what we're saying? Yes, sir. She really did. And, 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 and now you're having an impact, you believe, upon others uh, yeah. because of uh, what has gone on. Yes, sir. That's, that's definitely correct. Now, I guess, Ms. Joe, that must be the kind of story that you're looking for in order to help exactly, uh, promote exactly. what you're doing. And yeah, well, definitely with all of the violence that's going on in many various different ways, it's not just, as you would say, a um, murder off the street or somebody that you don't know. These are things that's really happening to people. It's not just something that you see on the news. It's your uncle, it's your aunt, it's everybody, it's your coworker. Everybody's going through some type of violence these days. So, yeah, this is very, very, very good that we need to get these positive things out there. Very mm -hmm. good. And, and, of course, Mr. Gleaves, uh, you've been able to... Uh, uh, I think you said that you are a minister in training. Yes, sir. Uh, you've uh, somehow gone into the ministry uh, in, in reference to this. Do you think that you, you, you can have any impact upon uh, some of the young men that uh, you, you, you yes, earlier sir. dealt with? Yes, sir. It, it already has been a major impact, you know, uh, being at Greta Grace Temple, my pastor, Brianna Mitchell, you know, and, and mm -hmm. just him pointing to me and, and especially the seeds that were sown by Miss Clement, it really helps me to keep moving and keep pushing, you know, because it's easy to go back, you know, it's easy to do wrong, but, you know, I stay strong and keep focusing. And many guys look look to that, you know, they see that and mainly show them away. You know, I can't change the guys who really into it already, you know, because they got their mind made up. You know, all I can do is so see, like Miss Clement, they really, they accepted me for who I was. They didn't try to change me, they accepted me, you know, with the dreads, mm -hmm. with the grill. And that's why I'm saying other other guys, other people that organizations, they getting this money and all this, but Miss Clement, she loved us and accepted us, but people who out here doing this other thing, they're they not accepting people like, like who I was. They want people who already like me now, mm -hmm. you know, that might be in, in a little trouble, but I, I was really out there, you know, mm -hmm. and God has changed me. 
Mm-hmm. And, and, and so you can testify to that as well, uh, I guess, yes. Ms. Joe. Yes, um, I mean, just within a little bit of time that I have actually engaged with Ms. Clement Greenlee, I've had nothing but success stories from young people to mothers that have had kids that have been uh, murdered to young girls who people thought that would not amount to anything and wouldn't be anything. And they actually uh, have come forth to say that, yes, Clemmie Greenlee was there for me. She would answer my phone call at any amount of hours. She would actually come out with me. She would go toe to toe with me in the middle of the street. So she really did get me together and let me know that there was a lot more better and, and I could be successful if I wanted to. Yes. Very good. And, 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 and so both of you have some very, very uh, encouraging kinds of statements to uh, make in reference to uh, this organization. And I think that uh, in a real sense, uh, it's the kind of thing that can be promoted not only here in Nashville, but other yeah, people have, uh, I mm-hmm. understand that uh, oftentimes this Greenlee will go to other communities oh, yes. uh, across the nation in order to uh, push this organization, the Peacemakers Organization. Oh yes, yeah. she's definitely traveling all over the world. If you call her, she will be there. A lot of times we have to slow her down a little bit, but <laughs> she definitely, we will make a way for her to be there. She definitely yes. is not going to say no. Very mm-hmm. good. And, and, and we've got about a minute and uh, 22 seconds on this segment, and then we're going to have uh, Ms. Uh, <coughs> Greenlee as well as Ms. Dial back okay. uh, to join the two of you, and we'll have an opportunity to have a roundtable discussion of about 10 minutes dealing with some of the issues. And what I want the two of you to think about are some of the things that you might uh, want to leave with our audience in reference today. Let's start off, uh, Gleese. What, what would you like to uh, say to uh, some of the folks that you know this morning about uh, turning their lives around. First off, I want to let them know that it's a way, you know, because if you don't feel like it's a way, then you, you can never escape. But God always gives us a way to escape for every temptation that comes our way. So just know that you can't make it through. And I, and I thank God that he changed me so that should give others hope that he could change others, you know. So. And- as well, we've got about uh, 30 seconds here, uh, Mr. Joe. Well, I mean, I would just like for anybody to really look us up, Nashville Peacemakers, and see if they would love to have them to be involved. There's many different areas of, of that we need and we need help within. So, yeah, please reach out to us, definitely. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Very good. And, of course, let me thank the two of you. And uh, as I indicated, we, the two of you will be joined by uh, Ms. Greenlee and Ms. Dial later on. Uh, for our final segment. And we'll be back for the uh, final segment of this show uh, in, uh, after this short commercial break.
Thank you and welcome back to the final segment of the show for today. Uh, we've been joined by uh, Ms. Greenlee, uh, Mr. Glees was on the uh, last segment, and of course Ms. Dial was on the uh, first segment, but we have them all together so that we could have somewhat of a round table dealing with the uh, organization uh, Peacemakers. And uh, let's start off, Ms. Greenlee, by having you to uh, give us an overview and a real sense of, of your organization and some of your activities in reference to uh, this organization. Well, the uh, organization, like I said, is 10 years old, and I roughly deal with youth violence. I've been in New Orleans for the last eight months dealing with sex trafficking organizations there. Uh, their murder rate is a lot higher than ours, and I almost got involved with doing some activities there. But I've always, already planted a seed here in Nashville, and I uh, murder rate is, is rising high. With the program that I have, Mothers Over Murder, Straight Talk, and Back to the Bases, those are some critical programs that brought a lot of teens and a lot of older people out to a better way of living. All I'm asking people is to, you, you know me. You done heard of me, you done saw my work. I do activities and events all over the map. And I am asking everyone to, to try me to, to invest in my organization. If we keep investing in these corporate organizations, we're never going to reach our kids. There's never going to be a grassroots organization that's going to get off the ground if we wait for corporate. Your little 5 and $10 that you're, you're throwing away on a Coca-Cola bottle or a pack of cigarettes can invest in your child's life in my program. I'm asking everyone to just go back into their heart, dig back into their pocket, come back to Nashville Peacemakers, come back to Clement Greenlee. I have an event the 4th of July in Halle Park. This is my seventh year doing this event. I feed the homeless in November. People knew I started out with my brothers feeding them in a limousine. On Christmas, I give away 10 Christmas, 10 families Christmas presents. But I go to the sleazy hotels and give Christmas away because people won't go there. So if you don't want to do it, that's fine. But if I want to do it, then help me stay out there and help me continue my work. Why don't you continue that, uh, Mr. Glees, yes, in sir, reference to... Yes, sir. I definitely support Ms. Clement 100%, but I also, me and my sister, we also have a, a youth organization as well, and it's called Why Love, in the sense of Youth Love, Inc., you know, and it's really great. And, and it's distinguished in two groups, Jules and Gents. Jules is for the females, and Gents is for the young men. And Gents, I have, I have been working with Gents for a, a year now, since last year in April, and I have recently changed my life and I've been saved for two years, so, you know, I, I've been hitting the streets hard, you know. And what do you do on Fridays? And on Fridays, yes, uh, and Fridays, Cumberland View. Mm -hmm. I know it is Dodge City Projects, but, you know, the, everyone else knows it's Cumberland View in North Nashville across the highway, and I do a Bible study. You know, I, I go around like 30 minutes before we start and, and let them know that we're going to be having a Bible study, so I'm letting them know that it is something different that you can do in the projects. You don't have to do like everybody else in the projects do, but I, I want to be a light to them. They don't necessarily have to come, but they can see that there's something else going on, mm -hmm. you know, and, and, and that when they, when they want to do something else different, they know who to come to, they know who to see, you know, and they used to call me smooth, so, so, they, so they know, okay, he, he, he's serious, you know, whatever he do, mm -hmm. he, he with it. So, I, like, what, what I do, I call it putting in work, you know, mm -hmm. in the streets, you know, they, they say putting in work is something bad, but Jesus said, do his work. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. I'm putting in work for Jesus. When mm -hmm. I go out there helping Miss Clement, I'm putting in work for Jesus. But yes. I'm doing it for Miss Clement also and for gents, you know. Yes. So it's an honor to be here to speak about this mm -hmm. because we are doing some great things and we need support and help because we really got love for the community. Uh, now, Miss Dow, you are uh, uh, from sort of a different uh, area in terms of you officially with the government itself. Well, uh, I retired, Dr. Haney, in 2009. Itself. But I now, how, could, how do you think that the government can really uh, help uh, what's going on? I think you've had an opportunity oh. to see uh, this organization uh, in, in, in action in a real sense. Uh, how, can you, how can you say, uh, how can you tell us how the government might be able to buy into such an organization to help such an organization? Well, hopefully we can, uh, because I, the, the basic, the bottom line is because of what I did and I saw so many kids high risk. That's ultimately what, what Clemmy's all about, what juvenile court is about is prevention. And, um, and then if they do get involved with juvenile court, it's trying to get them into a different direction 
for them to become, let them realize that they can become a, a, a productive citizen in the community. There are some programs and there's grants and hopefully we can get, uh, we're looking for a grant writer right now to help us um, fund because that's, that's one of the problems with the peacemakers is the funding is, and we need, we need a building. Yeah. We need a building to yeah. um, uh, do a lot of the programs that Clemmy yeah. wants. Uh, and um, hopefully that's, that's going to come about. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. There's a young man that was supposed to be here today, uh, Lamont uh, Lester, and he's written a program. She met him probably a year ago. Um, and he's had this program, it's called My Brother's Keepers, and she can, uh, you know, um, elaborate on that. Mm -hmm. But it's a wonderful program because we all know that there's, this is a father, a fatherless, there's a lot of kids that have no fathers. A fatherless nation, basically, mm -hmm. and that desperately need um, direction and hope. So many kids don't have that hope. And uh, that's why I was.